Having developed a general expression for a solution to the time independent Schrodinger equation uh, in the case of a slowly varying potential, so in the WQB approximation, in this video, we'll get some uh, intuition behind the qualitative behavior of uh, predicted by, by these wave functions. So if we consider a general potential given by the solid black line over here, V of X, and uh, supposing that the total energy of our system is given by this orange line here, we can separate this into three separate, uh, into three regions. Regions one and three are uh, known as classically forbidden regions. And this is because if you have a purely classical particle, if this is its total energy, it can never enter regions one and three. When it reaches this, uh, this point here, or this one, these are known as the turning points. Uh, it will just fall back down the potential well and be confined to region two. Uh, so in this case, we have that the total energy is less than the potential energy. And if we consider what we had to find P of X as, we're going to now have the square root of a negative number. So P of X will now become be a complex, a complex quantity. given uh, by this, so this is imaginary. And here I is uh, the square root of minus one as usual. So in this case, uh, we'll rewrite P of X as I H bar kappa of X, where kappa of X is uh, the same quantity divided by h bar, uh, which you may be familiar with uh, when you looked at the uh, finite potential barrier. This is sometimes known as the, uh, the k factor wave number. So what you get now, because this is uh, purely imaginary. Uh, this i will cancel out with each one of these i's and you'll expect the wave function to decay exponentially. Or uh, for this term and this term it will grow exponentially. So in general vary exponentially so it will uh, it will I, it will be a combination of exponential growth and exponential decay. In region two, so what's sometimes called the classically allowed region. Here, the total energy of our system or if our particle is greater than the potential that it finds itself in. And P of X retains its original expression. And we can, uh, because this is a real number, we can properly identify this as the true local momentum. Whereas when it's imaginary, uh, Momentum can't be imaginary. So this is no longer, uh, physically speaking, a momentum. Uh, so using the De Broglie expression or relation, we can rewrite this as uh, h bar k, k of x 
where this kfx is two pi over the de Broglie wavelength, which is more of a, a local de Broglie wavelength because it depends on, on the position. And we'll return to this idea in, in a later video. So in this region, you expect the wave function to continue to have terms, uh, complex exponential terms. So uh, we can say that our wave functions will oscillate in some manner in this region. Okay, so going returning to our picture over here, uh, we know that uh, in these regions one and three, we can expect the wave function to decay exponentially. In general, it won't uh, it won't really grow exponentially because the probability of finding a quantum mechanical particle in these regions uh, has to get smaller. And this is what you, the kind of behavior you expect from uh, when you study uh, tunneling through barriers. In region two, the classically allowed region, you would expect uh, the wave function to oscillate in some manner. And you can also expect the amplitude to be, uh, to be larger in these regions. And again, this is because classically you'd expect the particle to spend most of its time in, uh, in these regions over here. Okay, so this is uh, what we can expect our WKB solutions to, to look like qualitatively. Okay, so, uh, in the next video, we'll put this idea to use uh, in an example where, where we look at a generalization of the particle in a box. And then uh, we'll begin looking at what happens in regions one and three when you have uh, quantum mechanical tunneling and what our WKB solutions allow us to, to, uh, to learn uh, about those regions.